Greetings from Jim AG6IF. I'm configuring up some tough switches by Ubiquity for a couple of uh, Arden mesh installs we're doing. This guy's here. Uh, we're going to put a three bands of uh, Arden mesh, uh, 2.458, 3.3 at our repeater site and on a local hospital as well. So what the tough switch does is let us connect the three nodes together, provide two more ports for uh, local LAN connections onto the mesh network. This is always a challenge when I do this because I don't do it that often. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to have th the first three ports are going to be nodes and they're going to find each other in the DT link. The very first port is going to provide IP addresses to the last two LAN ports here. I've just labeled them P1 LAN, P1 LAN, port 1 LAN. So if you plug a device in here like a laptop or something, it's going to get its IP address from the first port. And that happens to be my M3 node. It's arbitrary, but I want to put it there. It's not so arbitrary. Uh, the M5W firmware has a bug, so the, the main port will not DT link. You have to use a secondary port on the M5W firmware. And man, that will uh, I spent a lot of time on that until I found Joe Joe's posting out on the internet and he explained that there's a bug and uh, probably not going to fix it. So just don't expect your your uh, M5 to do anything fun for you. Uh, because that's not gonna it's just not gonna happen all right so well let's get started here um, thank you to Joe for posting that uh, if anybody worked around Arden for a while you know Joe and Don so thank you Joe all right let's see where we're at here so it's a brand new uh, used box it came in I plugged my laptop in uh, port four five here port five it grabbed an IP address and I set my static to 1.20, 192.168.1.20. And hit the uh, the uh, default login address. I'm sorry, I set my static to 1.22. The default login IP is 1.20. So I'm going to do a couple of things here. All right, let's see if I can remember this now. All right, let's see here. Device, ports. Now let's take a look at the device here. Uh, first thing we want to do is management network and settings. We want to set that to DHCP. Has a fallback IP of 1.20. I'm going to hit save on that. I changed the name of the switch also. Uh, that's going to help if. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, we might do that later. Let's go over here and go to our ports. So we're going to want to do on ports here. Well, it's not going to let me do that right now. I'll change that back. Let's just change that for right now. We'll change that back to static. Okay, maybe it will let me. All right, let's see here. Ports. All right, we're talking again. Never mind. Oh, uh, yeah, DHCP. We're going to go to ports. I want to turn PoE on in the first three ports. All right, so we're selected on port one. We're going to come over here to PoE. Make sure that nothing is plugged in there that's not compatible. Ubiquity PoE is a little strange. 24 volts. Doesn't negotiate. It just turns on. Okay, first, first one. Second one, 24 volts. Works great for these nano stations and the nano bridges and the equipment that normally plug into these guys. Okay, first three ports are going to have PoE turned on. The last two are going to be regular LAN ports. I'm not going to turn PoE on unless I decided to hook up a Ubiquity camera or something like that. Okay, so we do have to save. We hit save. And 
the ports came on and my nano stations down here are starting to light up. Okay, they're already running Arden firmware, the nano stations. Okay, the next part we have to do is we have to go over and adjust our VLANs. So I wanted, like I said, three nodes to find each other in the DT port. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of these trunk ports. Very important. Uncheck the trunk ports. Okay, and we're going to use VLAN ID 1, make these all T's. See here. Okay, so no connection device. So what's happened is probably the very first um, I'm going to guess that the, the node uh, they came up now so one of those guys has given me an IP address, so I can switch myself over to DHCP from static. Let's see if that works. Going to DHCP. So once those nodes came up, there's their uh, DHCP server built in. Let's see if I can get an address here. Okay, I have an address. Okay, so 10 to 254, 154. The question is, now we have to find this box again. So 10 dot, let's see if we can get this to come up. 2 dot, 254, 1. On the other one, I, I configured the other one first and see if it gave us the same address. But you do need to know what address the uh, box has. So I'm 154. All right, we can do that another way here. So I'm going to go to my mesh network, and let's go see if we can find these nodes. Okay, mesh status. This is the Arden mesh, and here's my here's W6GTR is my M3 down on the floor here. I can see that here. We'll grab it. We'll go to it, and we'll see if this uh, unit has been given an IP address yet. 155 and 156. Okay, let's try those. 155 or 156. I might have to reboot everything. Uh, I might have to reboot the switch. And so we get a clean address here. Okay, let's see, is this the one? Hit add exception. Confirm. Okay, here. Now we're logging back into our tough switch. Let's use this we're using the standard logins right now. Okay. So what we did was when this guy came up it gave me a new address because we switched to DHCP if you remember so we're back kind of where we were ports our power uh, over ethernet's turned on two three and I'm talking and on port five here my laptop will go back to our VLAN tab a little detour there okay here's where we left off uncheck the trunk ports Sorry about that diversion there. All right, and let's see here. Go back here and take a look. Okay. T's. You want these to be T's. Okay. 